G'day you mob, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Pete's Kitchen. <laughs> so today I am going to show you how I put together my nutrient solution. Everything you're gonna need is in frame currently in terms of what we mix into the nutrient solution and a little bit of water. There's your water. So we've got some, we'll start with an AB solution. I just use at the moment, the cheapest one is Professor's Original. It does the job, so there's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, AB solution. I tend to mix the B in first into the liquid and then the A, you wanna do this instead of mixing the two together because there can be a chemical reaction that happens and you effectively get nutrient lockout or whether the nutrients in the solutions are no longer available for the plant to uptake. So yeah, first step is the A and the B solution. I also have a silica solution here, which I add in. This is uh, really good for improving photosynthesis and raising BRICS levels. So it produces an armor-like layer in the outer cell wall, resulting in stronger, more resilient plants. It's meant to be good for obviously the quality of the plant's leaves, but also protection against pests. So I've been giving that a try recently. So silica, that's easy to find. Then we have some tanlin here, which is used to kill fungus gnats. So you just put in two drops per, I think actually it's a drop per two liters. So I tend to put in two per three liters just to make sure. Um, yeah, expensive for what it is, but lasts a long time, right? I think this is about $40. And then lastly, I have some pH down because I know that the pH of my water here, my tap water is about 7.2, 7 7.3. I think it's, you know, it's, it's above, um, it's slightly basic. So I tend to bring the acidity down to about six, if I can, six to 6.2 is ideal. So anyway, let's get into the mixing. So <laughs> I just use milk cartons, right? Or, or plastic milk jugs. So these are three liter ones that we get from the supermarket. As a young family, we tend to go through a lot of milk. So I have four of these that I mix up. And the reason that I use four is because the syringe that I have, uh, it can take 60 mil. And so I use the nutrient solution at half strength. So that's 15 mil per three liters or five mil per liter, right? So I end up putting 15 mil into each of these three liter jugs and it just makes life easy. So first things first, I just chuck the, oh, let you see. And again, excuse the mess. I just chuck two of these into the sink at a time and I fill them pretty much all the way to the top. I might leave about 50 mil or so of water or space at the top so that there's, yeah, of, of water, of space so that I can add in the nutrient solution stuff afterwards. So we'll do this with all four, all the way to the top, move them across to you. Then I move this guy out of the way. So I just have these all sort of sitting here All right, so I have them all sitting up here like so. Maybe I angle you like that so that you can see me filling these guys up. But effectively what I'll do is I usually pour a portion of these guys out into some jars like this that I have marked as A and B. It's usually the B solution, at least for me and the ones that I've tried is the darker one anyway, so you sort of get used to it. I do this because the top of the syringe here doesn't fit into the jugs here for the nutrient solution. So it just makes my life easier if I can just shove it in and pull it all the way up to 60. So now I just do approximately, again, I'm sort of just winging it. It's slightly more than 60. So I do about 15 mil per, per jug. So we just let that sit there for a sec. Now I give the syringe a good rinse out because I don't want pure B solution mixing with A solution. So I'm just getting a bit of liquid in here and then sort of just shaking it around, rinsing it out. So I put B solution away. All right, A solution. Now B should be sort of mixed together here. When you use the syringe to kind of inject it into the water, it should sort of mix through the water. So if you, 
if you're worried about it, have a look through your through the top of the, the bottle at the end or through the side if you can see. This one's, these ones are opaque, so you can't really see. And if you see little particulates kind of floating around, that's a bad sign that you've had a reaction between B and A, okay? So it just means that you need to properly mix B with the water first and then mix in A afterwards or vice versa, okay? So anyway, 60 ml worth of A. So I'll do it the other way around now. There we go. So it's this sort of easy, guys. There's not really much to it. Same thing again, I'm just gonna give this a rinse out. So I'm, I'm using my hand here to get water in it and then I'm pulling the water up into the syringe with air and then just sort of shaking it like so and getting rid of it. All right, so that's A and B solution done. It doesn't really matter what order you do the first few steps here in. So two drops of the tanlin that can go in. You will need to shake things up if you put the tanlin in after you've put the water in because usually it kind of just sinks to the bottom as a little sort of glob and just sits there and you kind of need to really shake things up to get it all through the, the, the water because they're small crystals. Effectively tanlin is this liquid that has these crystals in it that when it's mixed into the nutrient solution, it gets mixed into your soil, obviously, when you water the whatever you've got. And the fungus gnat larvae that live in the soil will consume whatever they consume in there and they pull in the crystals too. The crystals expand in their stomach and they die alien style. So yeah, not fun. So the next step is the silica solution. Again, I've got like a little jar of it here and I just cut my finger up. How did I manage that? Wow guess that the silica creates crystals on the outside of the jar which can cut you up apparently. So that was brutal. Man, I felt that go in like a knife. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Okay, man that was um relatively deep too, far out. So I wonder what that was. Yeah, Oh wow, so <laughs> the silica crystals have actually made like a little blade along the edge of the screw-in part of the jar here. So note to self guys, be careful, far out. I was not expecting that to happen, but I guess it makes sense. So anyway, we're gonna pull out, so I do three mils, three mils of the silica solution in each of these. Man, I've got blood all over here too, that's interesting. Um, all right, three mil, boom, boom, boom. Pull in another three, boom, okay. Now, the last step is pH down. So I need to also clean out my little syringe here. Now, I've sort of tested this in the past and I have the amount of drops that I need to chuck into two liters to bring it down to 6.0 based on my tap water. So you can kind of work this out on your own. Obviously do this step after you've mixed everything together because what I do find is that if I mix in my solutions and then test the pH of the nutrient solution, it's actually been brought down to about 6.8, 6.9. So it's come down about half a, what would you say, a unit of pH in um, acidity. So yeah, so I mix in, I guess it'll be about four to five drops. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to, you obviously don't want to go overboard, right? If you put in too much, you will make it way too acidic. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five and a bit. And we can actually test this at the end here to see how I've gone. Why don't we do that? That'll be interesting. This is where rubber meets the road, right? So now I chuck the lid on each of these guys. I'm still sort of blown away that my finger got sliced up. And then you do these sorts of numbers. I call this the chicken dance, guys, right? You, you do this. <laughs> I feel like you need that music. <laughs> My kids always laugh when I'm doing this in the background. Like dad's mix, mixing up his uh, nutrient solution. <laughs> okay, I think we're 
done. I think you guys get the point. So now I just grab out a jar and pour in a bit of the nutrient solution. There we go, that's enough. And go and find my pH meter, which is outside in the greenhouse. Okay, so here's the pH meter. Um, this is the Blue Lab brand. It costs about a hundred and something dollars, I think, maybe 113, 120 bucks. Uh, it's a good quality one though, and yeah, it is pretty accurate. So it's much better than using the uh, drops. Anyway, so, so we'll just, what do we, do this in water first, give it a rinse. Let's see what the water is, just so that you guys have an idea. Here is a clean cup or glass. So, looks like we are at 7.5 pH, 7.5. Okay, so that's what my water is at, slightly basic, you know. So now let's try the nutrient solution. So we'll chuck it in there, it should drop down pretty quickly. If it's above 5.5 and between 6.0, I'm sort of happy. So I think, there you go, 5.8 ish. So that should be okay. What I could do next time is probably just four drops, maybe three drops in the three liters of water and that should be plenty in terms of bringing the pH down to what I want it at. So yeah, I think that's all there really is to it guys. Then I have 12 liters of the nutrient solution. It typically lasts me, I don't know, four or five days depending on how much I have to water throughout the house. This is the easiest way I've sort of found to do it inside. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any tips and tricks that you wanna share, just leave them in a comment below and let's continue the chat there. In the meantime, check out this video over here and I'll see you next time. Ciao.